episode one of Death by PowerPoint. So uh, this is a brand new show. And uh, if anybody's never played Death by PowerPoint before, the rules are very simple. So what you're going to see today is you are going to see three presenters give three different PowerPoint presentations. But the twist is that they have no idea what's in them. Right? These are completely random PowerPoint presentations that they are going to be presenting. And uh, they've got to go out there and sell it and try to give the best presentation possible. So we're going to be choosing our competitors in just one moment. So we've got a picker wheel here. So uh, you're going to see, um, here we go. So uh, let's see. All right, here we go. So uh, we're going to be spinning the wheel of gladiators here, and we are going to choose our first competitor very soon. But before we do, uh, I want you all to weigh in in the audience. So uh, if you are watching this live, you are part of the show today. So you are going to be seeing performers giving a PowerPoint presentation, and you're going to see a lot of ridiculous stuff, right? Um, they have to pretend like it's all intentional. They all have to pretend like they've seen this before, that this is all going according to plan. And the fun of this is going to be if you join in. So if you join in at home, uh, you are in on the secret. You know that you are watching performers give a PowerPoint presentation they've never seen before. And if you want to play along at home, the best thing you can do is comment as though what you're seeing on screen is not ridiculous. No matter how ridiculous or silly or absurd the things you see on the screen today are, go ahead and just comment like it's not weird. And you can start off, if everybody wants to drop a comment in there, say something important sounding. Post something like, like oh, this is going to be fascinating. Or um, what an insightful group of people. Go ahead and just drop a comment out there uh, to make everybody think that we're watching something serious. And before we begin, uh, I'm going to introduce myself. So my name is Chris Bogue. I'm your host today. I'm a coach. Uh, I coach people to get on video. Uh, I do video prospecting coaching. I also coach video content creation. And I've been a sketch comedian and an improv uh, performer for a very long time. I've been doing improv all my life. Um, it is a huge part of what I do. It is a huge part of how I get people going out there, performing at their best. Uh, so this is all a game of improv. Right? So we're going to have three people up here giving a presentation that they've never seen before. So everybody uh, engage in here, ask questions, get in on the joke. And uh, let's start this off by picking our first competitor today. So uh, I am going to go ahead and spin the wheel and let's see who's up first today. And the first performer today is Jen Allen Knuth. So we are going to be pulling uh, Jen here into the studio in just one moment. But first, let's give a, a thank you to our sponsors today. So today's episode is brought to you by Flying Cat and by Apollo.io. Thank you very much for bringing this show. We're going to hear a little bit more from our sponsors later on today. But first, we're going to bring Jen into the channel. So uh, Jen Allen Knuth, welcome to the show. I was really hoping to go second or third. No. Nope. Really. <laughs> Not today, Jen. Uh, you're going to be going first. So, um, Jen, uh, how are you feeling before this? So you've done a lot of presentations in your time. Uh, how are you feeling going into this one? My heart is beat beating so fast. I am an over-preparer. And I have nothing to prepare. So I feel like I'm either going to get canceled or exposed for this. But either one will be fun for a Friday. So let's do it. Hey, no matter what happens, at least I'm the one who caused your downfall. Right? <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead. And um, we're going to uh, share the screen here. We're going to go ahead and clean up the presentation here. Uh, and uh, we're going to give you a countdown. And then you will see the title of your presentation, and you will have six minutes. And uh, let's get this started. Here we go. Let's do this. Beep. 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 
All right, everybody. My name is Jen Allen Knuth. I am the president of Bant Mardone Sales Training, and I'm here with my associate Milk in the background who is taking a nap because he's heard this 17 times before. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics because everybody knows that in sales, if you do what everybody else is doing, you're just going to be as bad as everybody else. So today, we're going to talk about how to actually increase, not just by a little, but by a lot, your churn rate. Now, I'm sure many of you are sitting in front of your computers, like this fine gentleman here, asking yourself how I do it. So let's get right to the point. I don't like to make my audience wait. Let's look at how we get it done. Well, everybody knows the first, first step in increasing your churn rate and making your customers hate you is to find your why. What makes you unlikable? What makes you hated on the internet? For me, I like to look for inspiration from other creators who I think are doing a fabulous job at this. Personally, I think Kyle Acey is doing a wonderful job at being hated on the internet. So every morning when I wake up, before I greet my kids, before I feed my dogs, before I even brush my hair and my teeth, the very first thing I do is I look at Kyle's content to be inspired on how to be a moron. And that, my friends, is how we do it. Now let's keep it going. First things first, if you are lonely, if you don't have a partner, if you don't have a husband or wife, if you don't have a girlfriend or boyfriend, you are doomed to fail because everybody knows the best inspiration for inspiring churn is to have a fight with your partner. If you can't convince your partner to leave your house, you have no business being on a call with a customer trying to get them to churn. So some recommendations to get started would be, one, tell your partner their breath stinks. Number two, tell your partner, mm, that shirt is not flattering on you. Number three, tell your partner, I've been keeping score and you haven't taken the trash out in days. You are a terrible partner. Once you've angered your partner, now you're ready for the next step. Just kidding, never listen to anything a prospect says because we all know that prospects are liars. So that is a secret tip for those of you that paid to be here today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a short quiz. We need to figure out which end of the bird is the head. So I want everybody to go into the chat because no one likes a boring PowerPoint presentation and tell me, do you think it's at the top or the bottom? And remember, we're trying to drive churn here. So if you are wrong, I will call you out for being stupid because there's no faster way to get a customer to leave your PowerPoint presentation than making them feel stupid in front of people they don't know. So once we're done with the quiz, it's time to understand that we are not doing a good job. Okay. It is so human tendency to tell ourselves good job, to encourage ourselves, to pat ourselves on the back, to tell ourselves that we belong here. You don't. You absolutely don't. This little face is meant to confuse you. Confusion is a core pillar of driving churn. If a customer understands everything, why would they leave? You want to give them mixed signals. So I'm showing a happy thumbs up with a pink bow, very friendly, very kind, but I'm using mostly in parentheses to suggest that I'm lying to you. Customers hate liars. So once we've mastered this, now we are ready for the big bang, the big, big tip out of everything, peer pressure. The number one thing that I like to do to drive churn is I like to call up other customers who have churned. And I like to encourage them to go on G2, Trust Radius, Yelp, Glassdoor, and share their negative experience. Because we all know that customers and prospects are just sheep. They don't care. They don't have original thoughts. All they do is look to other people to see what they think. And then they go on LinkedIn and regurgitate the same thing. So that's our key. That's our big bang effect for driving churn. Get everybody to feel like it's the cool thing to do to cancel your internet and use the thumbs up sign. Now, if you're wondering, how do I do this? Let me tell you. If you're in the back of the room, you're not a closer. You're not a churn closer. Get to the front of the room when you deliver a presentation like this. Shake hands. Show people that you are in control. Show people your fancy watch, your fancy shoes. Let people know you have more money than them. And therefore, if they churn, it doesn't matter to you because you are fine. You are doing just fine financially. 
if someone disagrees with you and that customer wants to stay, well, we all know what we resort to. Physical violence. Grab them by the neck, threaten them that if they don't churn, you will find out where they live and key their car. Now, the last and final thing that we need to remember is something we cannot skip. Who is this? If you remember your customer's name, you will never get them to churn. Intentionally call them names that sound nothing like them. So if my name is Jen, call me Vanessa. If your name is Mark, call me Butthead. It doesn't really matter what name you use as long as you let them know that they are not important enough to be remembered in our minds. And by doing so, they will get angry enough where they decide this company is not worth my number or my, my money because they can't even remember who I am. And if you're sitting here thinking, this just isn't for me, I can't do these things. Well, then you don't belong in Bant Mardone's Churn Club Champions Club. Thank you so much for the time today. And I wish you all the very best in your ability to make your customers churn. All right. Thank you very much uh, to Jen Allen Knuth. That was Jen Allen Knuth uh, with her presentation, How to 10X Your Churn. So uh, everybody at home, if you're watching this, she shared a lot of insightful information. I can just feel the money draining out of my bank account. I don't know about you, but I've learned so much. I think I've just officially lost contact with every client I've ever won in my entire professional career. So uh, everybody give it up to Jen Allen Knuth. Uh, she was our first presenter. And uh, let's just keep rolling along then uh, with the Wheel of Gladiators. So uh, for those of you just joining us, we are playing uh, PowerPoint or Death by PowerPoint here. Uh, and we've got two more competitors. So let's give the wheel a spin. And Stephanie, Stephanie, you are up next. So uh, let's go ahead and pull you in here. <laughs> Stephanie, okay. welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. I have never been more unhappy to be in such close proximity to Jen ever. Um, so there's that for this Friday. Um, anybody else really, really excited to see me try to follow Jen up with that? Please show your support. Um, yeah, you do get them a lot, Jen. In the chat, uh, I need your love here, everybody. I'm ready to go. I'm ready for it. Yeah, so Steph uh, has strong feelings against Jen. <laughs> And uh, you know what? She's ready to do her presentation here. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to just uh, drop out for a moment. Uh, and then you can go ahead and take it from there. So let's uh, get your presentation queued up here. We'll give you a count of three, and then we'll get started. So here we go. All right, listen, everybody, we're here for a very serious subject today. It's a debate that's been going on. It's divisive. It's dividing families and countries apart. Sharks and Wendy's French fries. Why it pays to be number two. Listen, when we talk about fast food, often we don't want to talk about number two. But in this situation, there is some very important reasons why we need to get into why number two is important. Okay. I don't even know what sharks is doesn't matter. For the purpose of this conversation, it's about how you set yourself up to be the first place loser. That's what number two is. That's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, why am I telling you this? Listen, by the end of today, your goal is to not be number one. That's old news. That's boring. You don't want to be a top anything. That's for suckers. You want to be a first place loser. Okay, that's number two. That's what we're going for. Why am I telling you this? because we need to move on. We need to give ourselves a break. We need to lighten the load. You're all carrying around those huge backpacks of responsibility and regrets and shame, especially as we talk about French fries and fast food. And if you're thinking about it right now, 
you know that last time you made those decisions, maybe they weren't the best ones. So we're going to dig into what you need to do, how you need to do it worse to not be number one. Okay. So next up on our slides, what we're going to get into <laughs> is, listen, <laughs> I never feel scared. Random guy walks up to you at the gym. This is an analogy, right? We've all been there. You're walking out of the restaurant. You have got your bag of snacks. You felt so good about it going in. And you've got that guy who's coming in and you just immediately feel that pang of regret. All the sacrifices you made to be number one, first person in there, first person on the list. That's cool, that's cool. You ignore him, you shut him down. In this case, you say, goodbye nipples, have a great day. You aren't here for me, I'm not here for you. You go take that number one, I'm gonna go focus on number two. By the way, put a shirt on, it's sunny outside, okay? So forget about number one and his, and his shirtless self. You are hungry, okay? It is important that you keep fueling yourself, helps your hair grow, helps you be strong and fit, not so fit that you start thinking that clothes are optional, because that's awkward in a lot of situations, but what's really important here is that you start thinking about your hunger, your needs, what is driving you. We got a lot of salespeople in the room. Think about what's fueling you, okay? Is it money? Is it that you want success? Is it that I really want to get that logo? What is it that you are hungry for? And let's bring that back to what meal you are going to order with your fries and ketchup or not. Okay. Goal here is to be number two. So quick chant to the audience. Feel free to use our interactive here. What are we going to say the next time somebody says, do you want to be number one? No, no, I do not. I don't want to be number one. I want to be a first place loser. This is what we're thinking about. Number two, number two, okay? We got, I don't even know what this is, doesn't matter, morning cereal with berries. We are just going to lean in and think about how we say no to the super great, the absolute best. I'm seeing a lot of no in the chat, that's right. No, 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 I don't want your shape. I can't help but think right now that we need some good old 90s R&B playing in our soundtrack as we set up our goals for 2024, okay? What we think everyone else secretly does, spoiler, they probably do. If you think somebody is doing all the right things to get into that number one spot, nah, nah, that's why we don't want to be like that person. We're not going for that one, okay? We're going for number two. Do we think that those shark fries are really that delicious, that there's really nothing sketchy going on behind the counter? Nah, because you know what? What we think everyone else secretly does is probably happening. Generally speaking, if you see Kyle behind the counter when you go to order your French fries, the answer, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in the crowd, what is our answer? No, no, sir, that is not what I want, okay? So whose fault is it if you get the gnarly fries? It happens. Whose fault is it if despite your best intentions to be number two, you end up number one? You know what? It's everybody else's fault. It's not your fault. If you fail to be the first place loser, it's because everybody else is sucking at sucking, okay? The goal here is we gotta find that one person that we can make sure is the fall guy that's gonna get put on that pedestal. We don't wanna be them. We want to find that person. We want to help them be number one because being number two is best. And if everybody else decides they go for number two, mm -mm, that's not good. We're going to get stuck in number one. Okay. So it's Kyle's fault is the rule that we're going to go to. Okay. In conclusion, if you are going and you're setting up your goals for this year, whether you're thinking about, oh, my goal is to get a burger with fries. It's going to be amazing. My goal is to run a marathon. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but have at it. Okay, your goal is to think about how do I wash the dirt off of this? Okay, could be hard with Kyle, but we're going to keep with this. Don't wash anything that's going to get you to that number two. And if you are looking around the room and what it is that you're seeing is a whole lot of people all squeaky clean, all doing the things right, you let them take number one. You don't wash anything, you take number two. Give yourself a round of applause because you are now number two successfully. Thank you everybody for coming to this presentation. And remember, just say no to first place.
Oh, God. I'm sorry. I was getting so much fantastic information about how to be number two that I completely lost track of time. Um, thank you so much, Steph. Uh, I've been doing this backwards the whole time. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you for all the intelligent, fascinating comments we've been receiving here. I can really tell that we're doing something important today. Uh, we're really driving people uh, away from the right direction. And that's what I'm here for. And while we're at it, why don't we give another hello to today's sponsors? So we've got one more PowerPoint presentation coming up before this. Before we do our voting, we're going to need everybody here to vote for who the winner is today. But let's all give a thank you to today's sponsors, Flying Cat and Apollo, uh, two great companies that bring great programming to you. So we're going to uh, watch a special exclusive trailer uh, from our sponsors in just a moment. But first... Let's cap it off with our final performer here today. Uh, everybody go ahead and give it up for uh, our third and, uh, you know, last but not least presenter, Rob Jones. So, uh, Rob, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Uh, I'm ready. Uh, those are hard acts to follow, uh, but I will do my damnedest to win this competition. Uh, thank you for having me, Chris. Yeah, thank you here. We, we, we're we waiting on pins and needles. I know you've been um, really waiting a long time to share this valuable information with everybody. So we're all fascinated by what you're going to say. Uh, and uh, like usual, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give you a three-second countdown and then go ahead and enlighten us. I'm ready. Welcome, LinkedIn. Uh, before the end of this presentation, it's important to know what to do when you can't. Now, a lot of people say, I just can't. It's uh, colloquialism at this point. This guy obviously looks like he needs practice canting. So I guarantee personally by the end of this short six minute presentation that not only will you know what to do when you can't, but you'll know not to do when you can. Uh, there's a lot of angles you can approach this at. Um, number one is wear a hard hat. So I think the three key takeaways that we're going to explore involve a lot of adjectives, verbs, and basically how to move through in life when you just can't move forward any further. Let's look at the first slide. Remember what Mimo always says. Uh, I remember my Mimo, uh, God bless her. She always used to say that for every place there is a thing and everything has a place. What does that have to do with canting or canning? Well, I'm glad you ask. All you need to know in this situation is that some historical data and really mantras from years past are need to come out in 2024. It's time to lean into the past. It's time to lean into things that may have not worked before and still won't. And it's time to really embrace uh, not changing or adapting. That's really the first step is to realize when you're not able to do something and just lean back into that matriarchal wisdom from, from centuries ago, which leads me into my next point, the million dollar idea. Also from Meemaw, it looks to be a, a lemon flavored light bulb that you can eat. Now, a lot of people are looking at this thinking, you know, Rob G, that's a great idea. I can have some sorbet as I turn my lights on. Maybe this uh, is a Wonka invention never quite fully made it to market. Um, this is also on a deeper level, a metaphor for ideas that are complete shit that will never hold water, uh, much like a solar powered flashlight or a screen door on a submarine. It's, it's great at times to take a step back and just think, hold on a minute. I don't have it all quite figured out. A lot of your million dollar ideas are basically 10 cents. And so a little dose of reality here also for Meemaw is that at times you need to just pause for drama. Did you feel that? Does this look okay to you? I mean, a helicopter umbrella jetpack with flames on the bottom propelling you straight downward to a certain death may seem like something that needs to be put forth. I think this was a product posited by either Tesla or Microsoft earlier this year. They figured it out that what to do when they cannot. Um, so a little spoiler alert on the key takeaway from this presentation, but if this does not look okay to you, if it, if it does look okay, you're the ICP for this presentation. What to do when you can't, pause, back up, 
Um, and on a slightly more metaphorical level, give things a different angle, uh, spin them around. Once you do that, you'll be able to really ask yourself the question, how much happiness do you want? A lot of us on LinkedIn deal with sales, marketing, customer service, product and development. And that really ties back into a couple of key metrics. Number one, revenue. <laughs> but number two, and equally as important, how much happiness do you want? Uh, this man apparently wants all of it. He looks to be standing in front of a giant, uh, oddly shaped uh, Hamburglar reject character from McDonald's in the 1970s. And I, what I think my takeaway is that he wants all the happiness that he can steal from you as the, the haunting figure in the background is trying to steal from him. Just remember, again, driving this point home, what to do when you can't, not this. Uh, this is a good example of a slide that's inserted to really drive direction into a different area, like Gary. Uh, Gary here, uh, this is an acronym. When in doubt, just remember to, to Gary. Give a real yawn. And that is indicative of a pause. You know, open your mouth, really take in oxygen and think. Can I or can't I do this? And just because you can, again, another memoism doesn't mean you should. Gary V, I believe, who founded the Gary acronym um, with a lot of other expletives. There are alternate versions, by the way, that are not as PC. I can't go into them on LinkedIn. But give a real yawn um, it means pause, take it in, relax, deep breath, and then think. Does this make any sense moving forward? What to do when you can't? Just remember to Gary. Leading into this. The signs are obvious. They are. Um, here's the st stop and whatever that green sign is. This is, looks like some sort of danger. And that's the that's the point of this. Um, the sign on the green box is telling you, you know, not only should you stop, but you should st also removes the O from the expression. The key takeaway here is brevity. Sometimes when what to do when you can't means you need to take a pause. It's a quick pause. It's an immediate pause. It's a break from what you're currently doing to reevaluate. The signs are obvious. Sometimes they're made double obvious and quicker by omitting a vowel. Sometimes all you need to do is omit a vowel to take a step forward, which is in reality three or four massive leaps backwards. And that's OK. Uh, the key takeaway from this, are you ready to hit the bullseye every single time? Um, hopefully this will spins a lot slower than the one that picked me for this presentation. But if you're ready to take the leap, take the next step and really make an impact, just remember, when you can't not, do don't, don't try it. And that's also followed up by Gary. Give a real yawn. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the LinkedIn audience, I'm here to, here to tell you today that most of the time, as Meemaw said, what to do when you can't is not, and what not to do when you can is do. I hope that made any sense at all. Uh, I'm glad to give this presentation, and I can guarantee your success in the future if you just remember to Gary whenever you can't do something. Thank you. I've been Rob Jones, and I'll see you in my DMs. All right. All right. So, uh, wow, I sure learned a lot from there. Uh, the next time I want to can't, I'm just going to give a real yawn just like Mima did. So uh, thank you very much to all our, our performers there. So uh, we have reached the most important part of the show, uh, and that is the voting part. So uh, this is the time I'm going to need everybody there at home. Um, we're going to tabulate the votes, uh, and I need you all to comment. Everybody who is watching this, just comment with the name of the person that you thought gave the most captivating presentation. So remember, uh, presentation uh, number one, uh, how to 10x your churn rate. That was Jen. Right. Um, presentation number two, uh, how to be number two. That was Steph. Uh, and then finally, what to do when you can't. That was Rob. So your choices are Jen, Steph, or Rob. And uh, they are all competing for the title of smartest person in the world. So uh, this is very serious. Everybody go ahead, uh, weigh in on the comments while you're doing that. Let's give a thanks uh, to today's sponsors one more time, Flying Cat and Apollo.io. Uh, I am going to uh, go ahead and tabulate uh, the votes here. And while we do that, why don't we just hear uh, one last time uh, from uh, one of our sponsors. I can sell my B2B SaaS product anywhere in the world. 
Maybe I should start selling in Europe. Not so fast, Wait. Jimmy. Have you ever run a European marketing campaign before? No? Gosh, I guess not. Can you write fluently in multiple languages? No, just the one. Do you know anything about regulations in Europe? Well, maybe I could just have my team bullshit their way through it. Sound familiar? Hello, my name is Dr. Funkenstein. You know, when I need medical advice, I ask a doctor, but when I need SEO advice, I ask Flying Cat Marketing. Flying Cat is the world leader in customized local SEO and marketing campaigns. They have a team of native language marketing experts spanning across 15 different countries to build fully local campaigns to create and capture demand and increase organic search conversions for your business. Wow, Dr. Funkenstein. I reached out to Flying Cat just like you said and they were super easy to work with. How can I ever repay you? Don't worry, Jimmy. I'll be reaching out to you for a personal favor very soon. What? Don't ask your doctor if SEO is right for your business. Get started with your free consultation at flyingcatmarketing.com. All right. And uh, the totals, I think they're in. This is harder to count than I thought. Um, okay, the answers are in. Uh, and uh, looks like... The tiebreaker is going to go to Rob Jones. Rob, uh, congratulations today. Uh, you have been uh, awarded the title of smartest person in the world. Love it. I uh, would like to thank Mima and Gary uh, for this. would also like to uh, offer sincere appreciation to both competitors. Uh, I learned a lot from them. Um, number two is very important. Uh, always and it's jen is just jen allen uh so jen allen Knuth. uh thank you to chris bogue and to fat cat and apollo for this opportunity I, I i already gave myself the title of smartest person in the world uh my genius is a kind only understood long after my passing but it was great to be here today chris thank you Thank you very much. So, and thank you uh, to everybody at home uh, for watching this today. Thank you for today's wonderful sponsors, Flying Cat and Apollo.io. Uh, this was uh, the first of its kind. This is the first episode. We are going to be back uh, next week. Stay tuned. My live show, Chris Sells His Soul, is going to be here with special guest Dale Dupree. And then we are going to close out the month of March with uh, episode two of Death by PowerPoint featuring Leslie Douglas, Todd Clauser, and a special guest.